While the theory of Moses and the Israelites being in Saudi Arabia is a relatively new theory to those of us in the outside world, it isn't new to the locals living there. We were frequently approached by Saudis eager to talk to Americans for the first time face to face. And one of the first things they would say with excitement was, Did you know Moses was here? Let me show you where he and his people were. The tradition that the mountain in Egypt's Sinai Peninsula is Mount Sinai only dates back to the 4th century AD. New research based on Jewish, Christian, and Islamic sources indicate that there is a tradition that is 600 years older, and according to that tradition, Mount Sinai is in northwest Saudi Arabia. Several historical sources, including Josephus, recorded that Mount Sinai is the highest mountain near a city that is today called Al-Bad. Locals refer to Jabal Makla as Jebel Musa, the mountain of Moses. So you call this one, you call this one Jabal Musa? Jabal Musa. The Bible says that God descended upon Mount Sinai as a fire. The blackened peaks stick out from the surrounding areas and the rocks are only black from the outside. Why haven't we heard about this other candidate for Mount Sinai? Why has almost the entire focus been on the traditional site despite its lack of compelling evidence? Think about how many things line up with the biblical story right here at this mountain. There's a beach and path where the Red Sea crossing could have happened matching the biblical account. You can see how the Israelites could have camped near Elam with its 12 wells and 70 palms. Along the way to Jabal Makla, there's a split rock and area suitable for camping. There's a mountain referred to as the Mountain of Moses, with a large plain in front of it where millions of Israelites could have camped. You can see an altar of uncut stone at the foot of the mountain, where there's evidence of burnt sacrifices right where it should be. There's evidence of bull worship, and you can see exactly how Moses would have seen the golden calf worship going on as he came down from the mountain. There's a brook that comes down from the mountain just like the Exodus story says. You can see right where the cave of Elijah might have been. All of these little details have to fit, and they fit. After I came back from the trip, people asked how I felt standing there where so few people have been able to, and the predictable feelings were easy to describe. The adrenaline, amazement, awe, but there was an emotion that was more difficult to describe. I didn't deserve to be there. I'm not someone who's given away his wealth to the poor. I'm not a scientist or a pastor. And there are still days where I feel like I have no faith at all. But then as I looked at the mountains, I remembered something. The Bible has a clear pattern where God doesn't use the best or the most expected. Even Moses was so insecure that he didn't want the job. Rather than using the most qualified, the pattern is that God uses the unexpected, the insecure, the flawed, the depressed, the doubter, the underdog. Every single person can make a difference, especially those that think they can't. As you watch this, the Saudis are constructing a super city that is planned to be 33 times the size of New York. If all of us don't take action, Saudi construction in the area may destroy key evidence and prevent excavation for the foreseeable future. To try to stop these sites from being threatened, we have set up a website and a nonprofit organization to support further research and to convince the Saudis to preserve the sites so they can be saved and investigated. We're entering a period that we have never been in before, one where this footage and other evidence of the Exodus and the Bible overall are only a click away for anyone on Earth with an internet connection. And as these sites are revealed, it will change the Middle East forever and impact the billions of people who follow Judaism, Christianity, Islam, and those with no faith at all. The world is about to change. A small handful of Americans tried to sneak into this area in the late 1970s and the 1980s. They were arrested, and their photos and videos were confiscated by the Saudi police. Their evidence was lost. When I was in the jihad world, we all knew that the Mount Sinai was in Saudi Arabia. The people on the outside 
Even most Muslims had no idea that it was there because we fighters didn't want anyone to know about it. Awesome. So I think there's enough evidence here to easily conclude that this is the actual Red Sea Crossing. Uh, and as we'll see in a moment here, this is definitely the Red Sea Crossing because Mount Sinai is on the other side of it. Mount Sinai was first discovered in 1984 by Ron Wyatt and his sons, who walked across the border into Saudi Arabia without a visa in order to document the evidence here. After seeing the mountain, he and his sons were captured and were accused of espionage. They spent 78 days in prison, awaiting execution before they were finally released. After Lon Wyatt was there, the Saudi government, they know that this place is important. And also they have a special investigation all around the mountains. They found so many stone structures and the many ancient the rock inscriptions. The local peoples, they call it the Jabal Lodz. Jabal Lodz, Jabal means Arabic is the mountains. Lodz means the almond. It's something strange, Arabic and Hebrew name is the same, Lodz. But in Saudi Arabia, actually it's not growing the almond tree, except these mountains. God ordered to Moses, the Oholiab and Basalel, two persons giving them the knowledge to make menorah by the God. How they made menorah? Three branch and other side three branch is like almond flour. And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold, three bowls made like unto almonds with a knop and a flower in one branch, and three bowls made like almonds in the other branch with a knop and a flower. So in the six branches that come out of the candles. Also, close by to this mountain, there has been found a menorah painting which gives evidence that the Israelites were in this area. What I know, the oldest menorah was AD 70, Roman Titus, he took to the Rome, you know. After that, they don't found the oldest menorah up to today. But what I found, these menorah inscriptions, is very old. Why? Around these menorah inscriptions, there is so many old letters was there. This old letter is very similar to Hebrew letters. Okay. And call it maybe Talmudic. Talmudic, it means BC 13 to B B BC 15. Okay. It's almost Exodus the times. Wow. This letter with menorah together here. Okay. So, let me tell you. Th that place is a uh, Arabia. That place, why there is the Jewish mark on it there? And that place, why all the Hebrew letter is there? Hebrew inscriptions we found there have been interpreted to say place of rest, the definition of Rephidim. Closer to the mountain, inscriptions have been found that Dr. Miles Jones, a scholar of ancient Hebrew, believes are talking about the battle with the Amalekites. He says one of the inscriptions refers to the death of an Amalekite. Nearby, there are two inscriptions that Dr. Jones believes are marking where a Hebrew mother and daughter died. The Bible says that God told the Israelites that they possess the land wherever the soles of their feet touch. Near the split rock and near the mountain, there are many inscriptions with an image of a foot and a sandal. Next to the image, there is proto-Hebrew writing that means the sole of the foot. I understand from their video, they said where the, the black begins, it's very distinct. It's a clear change from normal rock to black. Like it's a boundary, a really clear boundary. Did you found that too? Yeah, yeah. I go to the, on the back side that I, I come to there. But this one, the, like stone, is melted. But uh, some of them, they arguing, say, oh, this one volcanic stone. But volcanic stone, if you broke inside, also is black. Yes. But this one, only the outside is blackened. 20 to 30 percent from the top of the mountain is blackened. But it's the, it's go down, it's normal. And we're just um, looking at it, and we, if you pull off this piece, inside it's a different color. That's kind of uh, pinkish. But the outside is black. Interestingly, at the base of this mountain here is a large flat area where the Israelites could have camped. 
It is huge in size and had streams of water and pasture land for their livestock to graze. Also, the climate was perfect as it is higher in elevation, so it's not hot in the summer and it's comfortable in the winter. This cave is known as the cave of Elijah. Now it says in Exodus 15, it says, Then they came to Elam, where there were 12 springs of water and 70 date palms, and they camped there beside the waters. After the Red Sea crossing, Moses and the Israelites stop at a place near Mount Sinai named Elam. Desperate for water, they find a unique location with 12 wells and 70 palms. Along the path to the possible real Mount Sinai, there is a match for Elam with many palm trees and, to this day, 12 wells. Saudi locals pointed us to this location and specifically referred to it as Elam. On the way to Mount Sinai, the Israelites camp where there's no water. Moses goes up to a distinct rock and strikes it with his rod and miraculously, water pours forth for his followers. The historian Josephus said that the split rock could still be seen in his time and it was so big that it could not have been moved. Is it possible that this split rock still remains today, testifying to the accuracy of this story? The answer is yes, and it is stunning. This split rock was first discovered by Jim and Penny Caldwell, an American couple that was working in Saudi Arabia in the early 1990s. The local Bedouins have long had two names for this area, the Water of Moses and the Split Rock of Moses. Really amazing about this specific location in the valley along the possible route to Mount Sinai is that the rocks underneath the split rock are smooth, as if tons and tons of water poured forth, forming a miniature lake at the bottom for the Israelites to drink from. If you have a relationship with a local, they'll tell you that this area is related to Moses. But the Bedouins that live here will try to keep you out. We saw this firsthand as we were chased out of the area. Okay, so we are flooring it. Now, a new eyewitness has come forward to reveal that the Saudis have been hiding the evidence of the Exodus since at least World War II. This man was an American pilot who met the king of Saudi Arabia. Bob Cornuke was one of the first people to reach Jabal Makla in the 1980s, and he recently interviewed that pilot and made the footage available for this video. It's an honor to meet you. Well, thank uh, you. We have, we, our lives have intersected possibly in something very historic, and we're talking about where the real Mount Sinai uh, yes. is located. And uh, I had no idea that someone as far back as World War II would have seen the mountain and had been told that the mountain was the holy mountain of Moses. Did any of the Muslims tell you that that was a holy oh, mountain? Oh yes, oh yes. I guess everybody in the military knew it was holy. In well, they well, made a fly around it and it was all Flemish. They're not to be killed either by God or by maybe some of them, I don't know. And when I took off, I was half scared to death. You bet I flew around it. But it was different than the rest of the mountains because it was black on top? Oh, it was a blackish green. It was dark enough to be uh, somewhat frightening. You don't know what I really believe. I think it's Mount Sinai. 
I thank God let me fly around it. That's what I think. I think he let you and me both well. <laughs>